นโมทัสสะบาโกวะโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะให้เราเสร็จมาเดทเอฟรวาลให้นั่งภาวนาสักพักหนึ่งโปรดระวังและโฟกัสในคุณภาพคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามาคุณภาพเข้ามา Find a breath that feels good to stay with right here in the present moment. We're starting another new year. The Thais have the advantage over almost any country I can think of. They have New Year four times a year. There's the Western New Year, and then there's Chinese New Year, then there's Drut Thai, and finally there's Songkran. In the beginning of each year, you have the opportunity to clean the slate from the previous year. In other words, look back on the past year. And see what things you did that were good, and what things you did that were not so good. Make up your mind to improve yourself, because this is how a year becomes auspicious. It's not auspicious because of things outside or the stars or anything. It's auspicious because of what you do. After all, you've got this opportunity to live a human life. You've been given one more year to start, so you want to start it well. Now, human beings, being what they are, it often happens that. Your resolutions at the new year stop a couple of weeks after the new year. If you have four new years, it gives you an opportunity four times to start them up again. But this is the last time this year. Like the buses, bus system, this would be the last bus. So make sure that you set things up right this time. And one of the reasons why we meditate is to set our minds in good, upright, and so we can think about our life in the past year and think about what's coming up for the, pre the coming year, what we want to make of this year. The Buddha talks about this quality. It's one of the perfections. He says it's called the perfection of determination. When you make up your mind that, regardless of what circumstances are outside, you're going to stick to what you know is right, what you know is good, what you know is helpful for yourself and for the people around you. So take some time to think about what you would like in this new year, or what remains of the current year. What would you like to make out of it? The Buddha recommends four qualities that you bring to this investigation. The first one is discernment, thinking about what really is wise to do and what is the wise way to bring that about. What do you want to achieve in your life? Don't let other people set your goals for you. You have to set the goals for what you want out of this lifetime. But use discernment in choosing your goals. What, when you attain it, really, really will make you happy. And what, if you try to attain it, will set you up for more trouble. You have to make the choice. Once you've made the choice, then you have to decide what is the most skillful way to bring that good result about. And the Buddha recommends being virtuous. He recommends developing powers of concentration. He recommends being generous, developing qualities of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity. He recommends, in terms of virtue. Observing the precepts, you can look at, over the five precepts. Which one are you lacking in? We just took them just now. What were you taking? Well, the first one was against killing. This applies to any living being. The next, the second one is against stealing, taking things that are not given to you. The third one is having illicit sex. In other words, getting involved with someone who already has a partner, or is too young to be having that kind of relationship, or who has made a vow of celibacy. You don't want to get involved with those people. The fourth one is against telling lies, and this is, includes white lies, even things you think might make other people feel better. But if it's not true, you don't want you don't want it coming out of your mouth, because if they catch that you've lied, they won't trust your words anymore. And as the Buddha said, if someone has no shame about telling a deliberate lie, there's no evil that person will not do. So this is of the precepts. This is probably the most important, yet it's the easiest one to break. So you have to look at your speech. Every time you open your mouth, is this true? Is this beneficial? Is this the right time to say it? That too could be something you make up your mind that this is what you're going to do this year to give rise to the true happiness you want. And then finally, the fifth precept is against taking intoxicants. We're intoxicated enough as it is with youth, health, our life, and then on top of that, we add other intoxicants so we can't see things clearly. So you want to check your precepts to make sure that they're all in good shape, and if they're not, that gives you something to work with for the coming year. So once you've decided 
use your discernment to decide what you want out of this year and how you're going to go about it, then the next thing is to be truthful. Stick with that decision. Don't let anything deflect you, unless you find something that would be much better, a higher, a higher goal or a more effective way of doing it. You, you can make those kinds of changes, but you don't want to lower your sights or let up on the good practices that you've made, your mind, that made up your mind you want to follow. The third quality is relinquishment, in other words, giving up the things that get in the way of the goals that you want. And this is not only things that are obviously unskillful, sometimes there are things that are on different levels of skillfulness. You want to be able to stick with the highest level, not just fall for other things that are lower. And looking at the kind of happiness you want, sometimes a really worthwhile happiness re requires that you give up certain pleasures. You have to be willing to give them up. And relinquishment, and generosity, learning how to make sacrifices. This is an important part of focusing your mind on what you really want out of life and sticking with it. Then finally, the fourth quality is peace of mind. You want to develop a sense of inner well-being that allows you to stick with the path when it gets difficult. And this is why we practice concentration, is to have that sense of nourishment. You can just focus on the breath for a few minutes and clear away the clouds of the mind, clear away the tensions in the body. That allows, it, allows the mind to think more clearly and it gives you the, a sense of inner health and inner nourishment that allows you to stick with that path. So as you look toward the new year, ask yourself, what do you want to make out of it? Are you going to let other people make your year for you? Or are you going to let your defilements make the year for you? Who's going to be in charge here? You want the wise part of your mind, the truthful part of your mind, the generous and the peaceful part of your mind to be the ones who are in charge. So try to bring these qualities to your life and the decisions you make about how you want to shape your life. Because if you don't shape it, someone else will shape it for you. And who knows what agendas they have. And if these qualities of the mind, the wise, truthful, generous, peaceful qualities of the mind are not in charge, what is in charge in there? The mind is like a committee. It's got all kinds of voices inside, so you have to be very careful about who's taking over the committee meetings, who's making the decisions. If something is unskillful, you want to keep them out of the room of the committee if you can, and otherwise just learn how to get around them so that the good members of the committee can be in charge to make this life, make this year at least, the year that you're proud to look back on at the end of the year. So take this time. We've got this opportunity now, one last time this year, to look back at the previous year and make up our minds of how we want to make the coming year to be. And try to make your choice wisely and with as much truthfulness as you can. <laughs>